I think I, I think mental health has this sort of weird thing about it. like it's a bad thing. Yeah. But having good mental health is still mental health. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And being able to figure out what are the things that help you have a positive experience of your mental health and then yeah. build on those, right? It's yeah. about figuring out what the triggers are that make you feel awful and what are the triggers that make you feel it's better. Really good. Yeah. yeah. And then trying to capitalize on those and recognize the warning signs before they hit you. Yeah. And or. And I think that's the wisdom, isn't it? I think as, as much as it's, I remember speaking to somebody years ago and they said, never waste a crisis. And I thought, what are you talking about? But actually they had a really valid point. If we don't make mistakes, we never learn. So True every fact. time I used to find that I, I'd hit a crisis, I used to think, well, it's teaching me something. At the moment, it's awful. I don't know what I'm going to do, but it did always teach me something. So now what I find is that I might still have, because we're all on a continuum, I might still have periods where, yes, I might get low. Yes, I might, you know, feel anxiety, but it's okay. Hmm. It's not pleasant, it's not nice, but I can dig myself out of it again. And I and like you say, it's the early warning signs that make the huge difference. Yeah. And that's how you move forward. Absolutely. I mean, I've suffered depression and anxiety from when I was a tiny tot. Yeah. yeah. And I, but the thing was, it never really got bad enough that it really sort of stopped me in my tracks. And right. so I would always just kind of paper it over yeah. and just carry on. And it was end of last year, well, end of 2015, that I just had a total and utter well, I call it my breakdown, but my therapist yeah. calls it my breakthrough. <laughs> well, yes, because that's but that the was thing. the thing, that, yeah. yeah. And that's that, the thing. that was the biggest thing about my journey in the last 18 months is, okay, I'm on the pills and they help. Yeah. I'm doing the mindfulness and meditation, which helps me not have an anxiety panic attack yeah. every time I do something wrong. But also the talking therapy helped me to sort of connect back, not into the sort of cerebral sense of what my life is and what yeah. I'm doing, but in the physical sense and being able to recognize the symptoms in my in my body of saying yeah. oh that now I can feel that that's a little bit of a fizz of anxiety I better deal with that yes. now before it becomes a real problem later on so it's really been about connecting back into the physical sense and that's why I'm doing the race as well so, so yeah the, the, it's race <laughs> it's not just a little run around the 5k park this no, is massive it is i'm going to be on a boat for about six months covering 20,000 miles on a yacht to one other people jammed into a 70 foot boat wow <laughs> and this is something you've never done before no I, I mean i used to sail a lot and actually when i had my very first experience of like real depression i was in australia at the time and i learned how to sail when i was there and i yeah. found it the most liberating peaceful amazing feeling and so that for me is now me doing my self-care is to say yeah. let's go away from all of these expectations that i have of myself and people have of me and find a way to get back to something and that you. i love yeah. to do and it's that self-compassion i think that mm. you so eloquently just summed up there you know what people and, and myself when i was first diagnosed with many different titles um, <laughs> and I was like I don't care about the labels just tell me what I'm going to do with it exactly but I think you feel like it's a death sentence yeah but actually do you know what my life's never been so colorful since I've been able to learn skills embrace myself and because I think we've both been to those kind of <laughs> difficult places do you know what you think I'm going to do it I'm going to try everything and if that doesn't work and I don't enjoy it fine but at least I think it actually liberates you it makes me much more humbled I have greater humility for people and I just think what keeps me well, similar to yourself, is mindfulness. I look at my diet, I look at my exercise, I look at all the holistic stuff I can do. Yes, I need a bit of medication, but that's not the sole purpose of it. Um, and then it's utilising the therapeutic skills that I've got. Yeah. Um, and well, I you think work that's... so hard with people who have issues as well. But do you know what keeps me well? By me working, you know, and helping people in, in my role as, as a therapist, it also reminds me when I'm saying to, to my clients, oh, uh, you know, we need to be doing X, Y, and Z. I'm like, when did you last do it, Paul? Go on, go for that run. Ah. Uh, and it makes a huge difference. And I probably the same for you with your sailing and stuff. Running for me is my sanctuary mm. because I have to focus on my breathing. I solely focus for that however <laughs> long I'm running. And it's, I learned very quickly that it, the thoughts would kind of part for a bit. That for me is the fundamental, is we have to give people the skills, because I honestly believe this, recovery is inevitable, 
providing your given skills, techniques, and like you say, de-escalation, grounding procedures, so oh, you can move yes. forward. Grounding is so good. I remember the day I learned that technique of just looking around and naming what you see when you're labeling. having it. Yeah, the Without labeling Without kind idea. of trying to say, well, that just, it's green. You're not trying to actually go, well, what, no, just, just purely I see labeling. green, I see a flower. Oh, look, there's some water. And it was the most fascinating thing that you yeah. get yourself into a real tears in a panic attack and then to just be able to bring it and all it back down breathe. again. Yeah. Breathe. Breathing. Rather than be caught up in the whole emotional distress of stuff. It takes practice. I yeah. always say to people, look, it might take this long, it might take that long, but you, but if you put the work I think the problem is maintenance. So when what I found is myself as well, I'm, I've been guilty of it. When I've got well, I'm like, I'm well. Yeah, and then <laughs> I don't need to do any of this stuff anymore. No, wrong. You need to keep doing keep it doing because it. that's what keeps you well. Absolutely. But I think that's just human nature, isn't it? Yeah. People kind of don't keep up with the maintenance side. No, but, but if you do, you reap the rewards. Absolutely. And it's funny you mentioned about the running for you because yeah. I have a thing I call it my Zen at ten. Because if I can make it to ten kilometers, oh, wow. the brain switches off. Like you say, yeah, all yeah, you're yeah, thinking yeah, yeah. about is breathing, pace, feet, yeah. and there's a lot of this been going on for getting prepared for the race, because it's quite physically demanding being on these boats. It will be. So it's been a real opportunity to, again, engage with the physical sense. And it's focusing yes. your mind, and, and we all have self-doubt, and we all compare and despair. We look at that, oh, they seem to be coping, I'm not. No, they might just wear a better mask. Exactly. But we're all doing the best we can with the best knowledge that we've got, and I just, it's like I ran the marathon this year. Oh. I never thought I'd ever, no, but I never, I was like, oh, <laughs> I'll just sign up for it, like you do. But do you know what? Every mile I ran, rather than focusing on the 26.2, I was like, that's another mile. That's another little bit of money for the charity. Yeah. What am I doing it for? And it was quite, I did it with my dad. Oh, and it was such, yay. it was my way of giving back to my dad because he helped me through when I was younger. He was like my torch bearer. Oh. And it was just nice to be able to go, I can help you run again because he had run for 30 years and get across that finish line. Yeah. And I think if you've got support, now some people aren't fortunate enough to have family support, but it could be your GP. It could be the local cafe owner that you go into every day. It's just yeah. about having a conversation. One of the things that I found quite interesting about opening up about my depression, my anxiety and the whole journey that I'm on is how many people have come to me and said, oh my gosh, thank you. Like, I didn't realize that there were more people out yeah. there who were experiencing the same thing I am or that, you know, I, I or my family member or somebody I know is going through something very similar. Would you mind if we talked about it a little bit? It's yeah. been absolutely fascinating and it's, it takes a lot of courage to make that first step and make the statement and reach out for yeah. help. But when you do, the level of support that comes back, uh, most of the time, not every time, time. Yeah, no, no, most of the time. But most of the time, you will get so much support from the healthcare professionals. Yeah. I engaged with Mind and Mid Hearts as well. They were absolute lifesavers for me. Um, and doctors, nurses, yeah. friends, yeah. family. My bosses were absolutely stellar in how That's they helped fantastic. me to deal with this. I was so lucky. And uh, yeah, if we can just get one person, reach one person with yep. that message that it's going to be okay. And you're right. Once you've had that first conversation, hopefully you'll get a warm response, which nine times out of ten you do, but it's empowering other people. Yeah. So when I've gone into <clears> sort of very male dominated rugby <clears> clubs <throat> and they say, well, how do we talk about mental health? I say, well, how do you talk about when you're at a match? And I say, have you ever felt, you know, a little bit anxious? <laughs> oh yeah, I think I have actually. Well, that, that's a form of mental health distress potentially, if it escalates. Oh right, actually, I think I might have felt depressed. And you almost give them license then because you're saying it's okay. Yeah. It's okay to not be okay. Yep. And I think that's, that's one of the greatest privileges I find now. I suppose I've been lucky that I've not really had that much negative response. But it's, it's, it is enlightening mm. because the statistic is one in four, but that's one in four that go to the doctors. We know that it's probably one in two. Every yeah. two people at any point, they might not have a diagnosable mental health problem, but they will be experiencing acute distress of some sort. Exactly, and it might be transitory, might be something yeah. that they experience and then never experience again. Or environmental, again. Or it could be exactly. just environmental. This is why people are fearful. I mean, it's like cancer was 30 years ago. Well, if we talk about it, something might happen but if we ignore it then it's not going on and it's the same kind of thing and you know I, I see a lot of people and I think 
we can prevent further trauma if we can help you now rather than yeah. waiting for it to get to a, a later stage of escalation. Yeah, and the same as with cancer, if we're getting in much earlier and educating people, yeah. one of the things that frustrates me most is that you go to school, whether it be primary school, high school, yeah. the majority of them, you get sex ed, religious yeah. education, biology, yeah. science, you name it, but does anybody ever talk about mental health? And it, no. No, because on the... <laughs> and that's exactly the yeah. age when you need people to understand the feelings that they're going through yeah. and how to deal with them and where to go for help if they need yeah. it. And that, it, you're right, because on the PHSE framework, mental health is kind of like this little part. <laughs> but actually, if your mental health's not well, your physical health will be impacted. And everything else goes to pot as well. I, what I notice also, for most of us, when somebody's not experiencing good mental health, is that they do all the necessity things, like pay bills and do it, you know, and the pleasurable things just get chucked. And it's like, yeah. actually, this is when we need to invest in every pleasurable thing that you could possibly do, because actually it is a matter of life or death to a certain degree, because you need to well, be able to is. get that enjoyment back. Absolutely. So, but no, it's great. I, mean, I think it's great that actually we are, we need to connect. One of the five steps to wellbeing that I know is to connect with yourselves, connect with nature, connect with people. Amen to that. And that's what's great about this whole program that yeah. Centre Mental Health is running, starting the thousand conversations. It is. And hopefully many more. <laughs> you can always do more. Exactly.